we were, we were talking about <laughs> smoking pot. Um, and you said you started later in life. Yeah, I started later in life. I was 31 years old, and I didn't. I never wanted to do it. And the reason why I was also saying I never smoked cigarettes is because I never wanted nigga lips. <laughs> like, I mean, you see dark skinned dudes with dark skin ass smoker lips, man. I'd be like, I don't smoker want smoker lips shit. are like super pink on the inside, right? But like, yeah, it's when the tar gets on your lip and then it discolors it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and it's like little burns, right? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes yeah, that's, that's yeah. cracked. Sound mm-hmm. like though, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 which man. Is we also getting, bad. We which is more, also which is, which is, equally, yeah, 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 if not if more, not. if not more, <laughs> little blunt, little blunt yeah. burns. It's happened. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's 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 pretty bad as well. Crack crack is pretty bad as well. I would up, say it's, it's 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 a different category, but still parallel. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So what made you, you said you, you didn't mm-hmm. want the, the nigga lips, and then you said 31, I'm, yeah. you good? So what or happened it? was uh, edibles started coming around. Mm. So okay. edibles was the same thing without the nigga lips. So I was like, bet. So as that was, as I started doing edibles, and I was like, I like the, the creativity I get from being high mm-hmm. is on a whole nother level. And so I get to start going, you know, you start hanging out at the comedy clubs. Mm-hmm. And here's what, here's where, <laughs> this is a one, this is a crazy, this is my Dave Chappelle story. So Dave is one of those people that will, when he, you can have a whole night planned and promoted, mm-hmm. Dave will call like 30 minutes before uh, cancel and be, your shit. cancel your shit. That's happened more than once? Oh, it's happened to me. I was set to do the Netflix as a joke right. thing. But I thought that, that was canceled. just a crazy thing that happened. This was the very next night after he did his days at the forum, mm-hmm. after the guy ran on stage, uh, the show had a showcase for us off the Netflix is, j- is a joke. We're all excited because yeah. we're like, yo, they, 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 people are getting specials off of this, so they're yeah. just ready to rip. We get a text from the show like, uh, yeah, the show can't go on tonight. Uh, they had to make a last minute change, and then we found out later that Dave Chappelle. I was at the Tupac um, thing they had downtown. Yeah, had that big, yeah, yeah. And I got that text, and I was like, "What?" It was like, "Yeah, Dave called, and he said he wants the room for the night." That wasn't the same show. That y'all not talking about the same show? No, he. This isn't happened just once or twice. This happens. Damn. It, I mean, but it just. That's it's kind of, kind of what comes with it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, when you're the biggest, one of the biggest names yeah, in comedy. It's, it's like, Dave. Who's gonna tell Dave yeah. no? Yeah. No. When I when I, like, I went to the forum for Dave and Chris Rock's pop up show, that was just a pop up show. That wasn't even the show that they were they had planned, and it got like ten thousand people on a pop up. Pop up. What you gonna do? <laughs> Who's gonna be the person to tell Dave Chappelle no? I mean, I was upset about it, but at the end of the day, it's like. You want to be the comedy club that Dave Chappelle says you know never work again in L.A. You want to be that person. You want to so be like, that person. So, I, I get it. So, me and Ron Taylor was promoting this show, Black Guys with Glasses. We've been promoting this show for Thank a whole you. entire fucking month, bro. Damn. We 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 doing everything, and so we get there, we get it, whatever. Richie, who uh, is the manager at the comedy store, says, "Hey, Willie, uh, Ron." The show can't happen. We like, why? What happened? We got we sold 20 tickets. Like we, <laughs> we, we, we made <laughs> we made our limit. <laughs> oh, Chappelle got y'all about it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. Uh, uh, no, okay, that kind of changes things, Willie. That <laughs> you gotta you gotta leave with 20. That. That kind of changes things. See, we had we had a there might out. have been some walk-ins. <laughs> there might have been some walk-ins. I will give, give you twenty-six, but even still, they was like, "I'll pay these niggas the money for twenty-six people." <laughs> they said, "We'll bet on Chappelle selling more in thirty minutes." <laughs> Let's give Chappelle thirty they twenty-five kept, minutes. They canceled this shit ten minutes before. I'm like, we're not worried. Oh, Chappelle's here. We're, they would have canceled us in mid-show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lit <man>. me early. <laughs> hey guys, there. welcome. Out. Oh, time to get out. Okay, great. Uh, so, so thank you guys so much for coming out. That's that been my time. That might have been worse. Niggas ain't even got their drink orders in. She, she's still on break. All, all we said was you would see black guys with glasses. We, we didn't, we didn't, promise, we didn't promise anything else. We didn't promise anything else. Nigga, look. Check it out. Check out. And now you get Chappelle. You got to repay for the tickets. But now you get Chappelle. Chappelle would have been the type, though, if he had did that, he, he would have let him stay. He yeah. would have just, like, I will say this. I've only seen him live once. And it was in, it was in the belly room. And he came. 
bumped some comics, but it's like, hey, nigga, I got bumped by Chappelle. Even that is, is a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. So he goes on stage. She's still doing his thing. He, he's smoking, you know, just typical Chappelle. Of course, he's like, you know, the phone shit. He ate the phone shit, all that type of shit. I just did a little spill about that. And then probably like five minutes after that, my phone goes off. Like This is, this is the alarm. This is the timer, though, right? Uh, and so I'm like, uh, he's like, ah, damn, man. I'm like, hey, it's my timer to let me know I need to put some money in the meter or, you know, move my car. He was like, all right, go ahead and move the car. I was like, I've never seen you before. I'm staying here. He was like, hey, go move your car. I was like, nah, it's okay. I'll, I'll stay. He was like, well, let me pay for your ticket. And I was like, nah, I don't need to pay for my ticket. Like, Come on, man, get money. He pulls out a wad of hundreds, right? It wasn't like a, like a let me, let me, you know, get to the hundreds or something. Like, <laughs> wad of hundreds, 100 on the front, one on the back, and then 100 hundreds in between, uh -huh. right? Just gives me a $100 bill. Uh, finishes the show. I, I go back and sit down. I get out to the car. Definitely had a ticket, but Man. I was not using that that hundred dollar bill. I have the ticket and the hundred dollar bill framed in there in my office. Oh, oh you never paid the ticket? I paid it. I paid it with my card. <laughs> paid it with my card. I, I couldn't pay it with a hundred dollars anyway. Like you gotta, you know, do it online. But it's a it's cool still, ass story. It was it was dope of him to do that. Yeah, like it was, really it was dope of him to do that. So like. This happened. The gesture. This happened before he called and canceled our show, and I was little, I was a little upset, a little perturbed <laughs> about it. But at the end of the day, still fucking. He Chappelle. gave you a hundred. It's still <laughs> still fucking Chappelle, bro. Well, so. we didn't get a hundred. So, <laughs> <laughs> so so they canceled us. I'm I'm pissed, and I will go to the like. There's like a little back part of the comedy store uh -huh. where everybody's smoking. So people trying to pass me weed. I'm like, nah, man, I ain't I don't want that, man. I ain't smoking. I ain't smoking. And so Richie's like, let's go to the VIP bar of the comedy store. I'll get y'all a drink. I'm like, cool. So it's me, my boy, Pap Johnson, his girl, and uh, Richie. And so we back there, and I'm drinking, and I'm talking. She goes, this is the second time Dave has canceled the show. For you? No, well, I was a uh, crack 'em up was one of them, uh -huh. and this is just, and then it was ours. So I'm talking to all this shit. It's a super Dave. villain to some comics. <laughs> 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 Dave. Ha 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 <laughs> Laughing ballsy. <laughs> oh, shit. So Richie's pouring us these drinks, and I'm talking shit, man. I'm like, yeah, man, fuck Dave, is what I said. <laughs> it's what opens I said. Opens the door. It's what I said. The door opens. Uh, it's Tim. fucking Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. What's up, Richie? I fangirl clean the fuck ah, out. Ah, you pussy. I pussy clean <laughs> the fuck out. He sits down. He st we talking about him possibly sponsoring one of the basketball teams in the comedy league. I'm over, yeah, Dave, yeah. So he rolls up this blunt, right? He hits it. Willie's panties got so wet. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that fuck Dave was the last thing you said. <laughs> he stood up and all you heard was, that was the sound of Willie walking out the room after day. Crying that is river. hilarious. <laughs> Don't go, Willie Waterfall. <laughs> so he's talking okay, about wait. the basketball team. He, he, rolls, rolls, the blunt. he rolls his blunt. Uh -huh. He's like, he hits it. He's like, Pap, you want to hit it? He, Pap hits it. And he looks at me. I grabbed that shit. Yeah. <laughs> he made you switch and smoke. Man. <laughs> He didn't even offer it. You just grabbed it? No, no, no. He was offering okay, okay. it. Okay, He was. He was like, you. I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, man. And I smoked, and that's how I smoked my first blunt. So then, Damn. I, you know, they, they smoke, and now the word has got out that he's here. Norm McDonald's comes into the VIP room. <laughs> uh, the Tory brothers. And it's just like everybody that's everybody. And yeah. I'm sitting here talking to Guy Tory. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. St. So, Louis? Yeah, St. Louis. Uh-huh. And um, it's now packed with everybody. And Richie's like, y'all can stay. We was like, oh, hell yeah. So we back there. I'm talking to Guy. And this talking about St. Louis. And he's like, the, what's wrong with uh, younger comedians is like, it's not a lot of solidarity. It's like, y'all mm -hmm. should be putting these projects in short film festivals instead of just making them sketches and throwing them online. That way it changes your resume up some. Mm -hmm. And that's what the conversation we had. And I remember just doing this, like closing my eyes. I'm closing my eyes. And it was like one of those long blinks. And I said, all right, hey, I'll be right back, guy. I go to the back of the uh, comedy store in that outdoor area. I, I close my eyes. Just, you know, because mm, I'm like, I got to rest. I, I'm, 
fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. You just hit it. You just hit it once, hit. right? And it was Dave's. Dave I was about to say, weed. there's this no way not, Dave Chappelle it's not smokes weed. Mid. Regular, absolutely not. <laughs> this weed was the strong. This the highest high <laughs> that I have ever been. I open. Uh, I get waked up by Richie. Richie wakes me up. Hey, hey, Willie. Hey, you gotta get up. It's time to go. I was like, oh man. All right, what time is uh, Dave going up? He's like, Willie, you've been. It's 3 a.m. <laughs> I passed out you in the, the back. Show. I missed the show. They were cleaning up when I was walking out. So were they sitting around you? No, no, no. The, like, yeah, the, walked out the room back to like the little smoking area yeah. where no one was at. Oh, yeah. I thought you were yeah. in the green room. Okay. No, 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 no. I wasn't in the green room. Now I went to the back, just closed my eyes, I thought, but knocked out for like three and a half, four hours. Yeah. That was Dave's plan. He. he <laughs> so you would think I don't like him out. now before the show? You made me miss the opportunity to see you. He, he knocked you out. It's like that you're gonna get in a free show, nigga. <laughs> what, if, what if that was what Martin was talking about the whole time? Like just getting this weed, making a pass out. Now you forgot about racism. Yeah, so like, wow. <laughs> That is it. That nigga beat you non-violently. <laughs> Story. That is, that's, that's uh, how, well, not how, but when I smoke weed first time out here, it was with Snoop Dogg. Uh, and I was at a con- uh, comedy show that John A was throwing. Uh, she was hosting. She mm-hmm. had partnered with this weed company. And they were starting late. I was like, fucking weed heads, right? <laughs> and so the comedy, the place, was, the venue had like an like outside porch, but it was in case. It was enclosed. Yeah. So I go out there and it's just these like picnic picnic style tables all all over this encasing. And Snoop is sitting at one, he's sitting at the like the head of one, and he's just rolling joint after blunt after blunt, right? And so I'll just I'll make my way over there. I sit next to somebody. So I'm about two people away from Snoop. And I was planning on just sitting there because you know, conversation's good. And he, mm-hmm. he hits it and he passes it down. They just keep passing it. It's like, fuck, I'm gonna hit this. So the first one was something called God's Gift. <laughs> blocked every blessing that I had coming to me that <laughs> night. Uh, then he rolls another blunt. And that one was like his weed, his strand of weed. And then I hit that. And like my only thought is like, don't cough. So on the first one, uh-huh. guys, if I was good, I hit it. Hell nah. Then hit it again. Yeah. Then he passed it. Let that shit go, right? Yeah. And then on the second one, hit it. Hit it again. Pass it. Now, I felt the cough coming. Because mm. you know, as soon as you hit that cough, that's when the, the high activates. As soon as you hit, as soon as you, <laughs> that high is like, <laughs> And more and coughs. And it gets worse as you try to hold it. Right? More coughs activate, too. Man, so I'm good. I stand up, and I, as I'm standing up, I cough. I was like, fuck. I feel my ears getting hot. I'm like, oh, this shit's on the way, right? Uh-huh. Like, you know when your ears got hot, that high is on the fucking way. Bro, I got high so so fast, I had to find John A and tell her, hey, I, I can't perform. No. I'm, Damn. T- I'm too high. All right. <laughs> I leave immediately because I was like, it's only going to get worse from here. Like, it's not even 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like five minutes. So I'm walking to the car, and by the time I'm walking down, I don't know if it was the altitude or what, but just the movement. <laughs> I'm high as fuck by the time I get to the, to the sidewalk. I'm so high. I am walking down the street. Oh, I get to my car, man. and I'm sitting in the car, and I told you before, I, 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 I lower the vanity mirror, and I cover my eyes and I start giggling to myself because <laughs> I think I'm invisible. I think I'm invisible to the point where I get out the car and I'm walking down the street thinking nobody can even see me, right? That's how fucking high I am. That would have been so cool I to see. Am. Walk past the car right. and see to here doing that. Right. I'm like, nigga, it took 28 <laughs> years for me to get my special power, but now I'm high and I got I unlocked it. I don't know why I thought the weed had unlocked that shit. Bro, I'm so fucked up. I realized what the fuck I'm doing. Then it strikes me. I couldn't see myself because I have my eyes covered. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. had my eyes covered when I'm looking in the mirror. I get back in the car. I sit in the back seat. I call my, my guy's sister on my cell phone. I say, she had just moved out here. I say, come get me. I'm not in a good place. She said, where are you What at? time was it? Bro, it had to be like 8 or 9. Now, she had just moved to town, right? The people she drove to town with, they with her, they all at Roscoe's. Yeah. It's like, we just got seated at Roscoe's. Mm-hmm. It's going to be about an hour and a half. I was like, take your time. Mm. <laughs> call me every 30 minutes to make sure I'm not dead. I've never been high like this before. Nigga, I was gone. And I vowed to never smoke with Snoop again. I hey. just What's crazy is he smoked before and after that, too. But in both scenarios, that like blunts were being smoked, and that was just one hit. 
and they were smoking that, that weed all day. Mm-hmm. How are you built like that? That's it's not diff- even fair. That's crazy different. It's not. It's not even fair. I don't even want my tolerance that high. It's. It, it must be hard to keep up with because yeah. I don't feel like. Or well, they have a lot of rich friends, but it doesn't seem like the casual people are are getting that high on, on any day. No, you no. have to. You have. That's like a. I'm not doing anything on vacation type of high. I I've had to talk to my son because he smokes a lot. And a lot, and he. What's a hey lot? Yo. Hey yo, hey yo, you wanna hit this? <laughs> His son always throws everything with hey yo. They hey got yo. a podcast together. He be like, hey yo, hey yo, you ever been sprung before? <laughs> hey yo, <laughs> looks like a light skinned version of it. Everything yeah. looks like a light skinned version yeah. of it. Yo, that, that's, it's crazy. That's my boy, man. So they changed up the words for some shit. So he wakes me up one morning. He's like, hey, Dad, you want this morning wood? And I'm like, what? <laughs> no. No. He's like, you want this morning wood? And I'm like, I must still be fucked up. <laughs> because That's what they call it, the backwood? They show it a backwood? Yeah. Does it say wood? You so when you smoke a backwood that you left from oh, over overnight, wow. and you still have some left, it's called a morning wood. I never I'm like, heard Never. That. No. I've no. never heard that. No. It ain't gonna be Let alone passing it to my, my dad. <laughs> That's only going to the chick I'm smashing. You trying to smoke this morning wood? Yeah, you better you better hit this shit while you riding me and ash on my chest. <laughs> what you do this morning? Oh, me and my son had a morning wood together. <laughs> we shared morning wood? <laughs> you shared- no. You're going to jail, you bucko. You hit this morning <laughs> wood is you wild. You're going to jail, bucko, immediately. Hit this morning wood is wild uh, business. No, sir. I he got am good. We got to change that. <laughs> it's a wake and bake is the proper term for that. Yes. Wake and bake. Yes. That's what we... Yeah, but that's the thing the, is, words just change. <laughs> oh, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. Like, I can't get with a lot of this new slang because... At one point, they be calling extended clips dicks. Glock got a dick in it. Yeah, Glock got a dick. When I up that dick on you, first of all, first of all, I don't even know your your name, young man. Two dicks in my pants. Yeah, whoa, hey, hey, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> yeah, that's Officer, scary. This young man is out here soliciting <laughs> dicks. You are trying if to you scare open the up that trunk or the glove compartment, I, find, I, I guarantee you you're going to find a lot of dicks in there. Glock got a dick on it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that's not, a, and I don't know who, it's not even from a homophobic place, but it's like, but why would you do that? Don't take this sexual put thing a dick and make it, it yeah. violent like that. You put Tossing a dick on your weapon? used to mean fighting. <laughs> Huh? Tossing, Wait. like, you know, no. me, you tossing a salad. I no. never heard that, and we're from the same place. I'm going to be honest I'm from with Arkansas. you. I'm from Arkansas. I was born in Arkansas, raised Ain't in no St. Louis. Okay. So people are like, meet me out meet me out back, we tossing the salad? Yeah, I've heard tussle. I've heard. Are you, are you sure it was tossing, not I've tussle? I've heard salad before. Salad you, is like a mix of strains, is yeah. what I've been heard. It's like, Wait. oh, it's the leftover weed that you mix together. Wait, I, oh, he's talking about where fighting. Are you talking about a fight? You, oh, where no. did you come from? I dropped it in the <laughs> ground. <laughs> that's Cal. He's Syracuse. That's Syracuse. That's that's El Pisco. He, he's yeah. still on Dave Chappelle's story. He's like, so Dave did what next? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got a contact high from the story. <laughs> he got a contact high from hey, the people, story. Hey, people excusing themselves to toss the salad is crazy. And I don't know who would change that from fight to eating booty. I hope never. I'm, well, I'm glad. And never caught on. Mm-hmm. It's just some old uncle shit. My How uncle would they say it? it? Like, like a spelling bee. Like, use it in a sentence. <laughs> hey, did you? You got? I heard you was arguing with that dude at school. Did you toss his salad? Yeah, that's oh, not okay. You switch the his to toss his salad specific. Well, or y'all yeah, I'm just, just using it in a sentence. Whoever you fight. Yeah. But I thought it was just we both were tossing the salad. Not did you toss his oh. salad? Oh wow, yeah. specific. So it's like you were mixing that motion him up. Uh-uh. No, that's okay. I, Motion's doing nothing. That is man. that is very misleading. That is you very know when misleading. You do this? <laughs> Don't you do this? Man? Did you toss this? Uh-uh. Sal- Did you, you toss this salad? No, 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 no. That's wild. That's, I mean, that that's don't our, even. If we didn't know about the eating booty, that still sounds weird. That sounds very that's weird. Not a, that's not okay with that. I don't. I don't mix something that we say right now is gonna change. Yeah, decades from later. I'm. I watch crazy. This show called uh, Solar Opposites. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the cartoon. Hulu, the cartoon. It's like Rick and Morty created. Yeah, it. yeah. And the chick on there, the little girl on there, she was trying to get budget to like pop off as like basic. Right, and she was like, "Oh, like you budget?" I was like, "Oh, that shit is so budget." And I was like, "I like it." And that's that's a kind of fire. <laughs> yeah, 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 I like that. It's I like cool. that. 
You out here fucking with these budget ass bitches, bro? <laughs> the bitches that shit budget. go hard though. That's, budget that's, bitches. That I'm sounds better than basic. Bitches. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that shit going. Budget, yeah, budget. bitches. Y'all out here off budget ass. <laughs> One that I heard that's similar to what you're saying that I heard is kind of cool is basement. Like they're like, that's a basement nigga right there. Like that nigga just like he belongs in the basement. Like he ain't mm. doing nothing with himself. Like he's staying in his mama's basement. Okay, like, I see, basement I see nigga. the yeah. the connection to it. It's just a lot. Anytime it's got three syllables, it don't really roll off basement his tongue like that. Basement. Now you how, right. Now how we say <laughs> basement. How you say basement. <laughs> basement. <laughs> You can say some shit is basement too. Like, yeah, that shit basement. That shit that basement as fuck, boy. We I got like two, budget though, two B words cracking. Yeah, I like budget. I yeah. didn't know until just now. I mean, I know that the kids are saying risen you up. I I thought that meant just spitting game and shit, but I guess that's a play on the word charisma. I did not know that. Did y'all know oh. that one? Risen? Risen. No. Uh, I are heard saying Riz, Riz Master, got the Riz, all that. Um, I didn't yeah. even know there was a thing over there to even look at. It do me <laughs> the comments. Oh, hippie. That's uh, it, it does mean swag, but that's the thing. That's how we know we getting old because our our words on the way out. Bussing, bussing means like like some food is good, like that's delicious, delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, delicious. I just found that out. I was talking to somebody. Ago. They were saying you couldn't say food was either bussing or slapping. One of. Oh them. yeah, I hate that. I be getting that because I be uh, saying uh. Food slaps, and they say yeah. food smacks, music slaps. Mm. Food smacks, music slaps, and if you you where do you learn this though? <laughs> e forty <laughs> saying that food be smacking though doesn't. But I, but sound I would be so good. Up. No, doesn't sound yeah like, like slapping what? sounds better than smacking. Like slap food. your mama good. That's right, what I thought that's it what, was. Yeah. yeah, but they say that music got a slap, food got a smack. And if you if you get it mixed up, E forty comes out of nowhere and beats you. <laughs> <laughs> like I, it took me a while to stop saying "cuz" out here. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't do that, even if they're your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. And I know niggas in the south used to say, "What's up, young blood and blood." And yeah. Stuff like that. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we we that's, said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy because like it, it, you come from another city, there is no pamphlet. Or like, you know, just a quick review guide of what you can and can't say slash where slash <laughs> right. go. And it really should be. It should be somebody at Man, the airport. For real. And, oh, are you new to LA? Great. Take this pamphlet. It's a survival guide. Mm-hmm. Uh, what hats you can and can't wear. Man. Abandon it's, all sports loving out yeah. here. Just, yeah. yeah. Don't Mariners. even show you can, wear, you can wear the LA hat. Uh, and uh, an array of colors. And by array, black or blue. Yeah. Uh, is acceptable, and everything else is at your own risk. Everything I would, else. man, get you, just get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> get, get a haircut. I literally, when I was in college, I just started wearing hockey hats, and I don't know if there's any updates from that, but from middle school to high school, I just couldn't like. I feel like these games need like a sergeant of arms, and they also need somebody to collect minutes at these meetings because we need to be updated as mm-hmm. citizens so that we are not unintentionally being disrespectful. All yeah, right, so right. I, I'm just gonna own. recommend that. That's what I'm pushing for: games to like follow Robert Rules of Orders, uh, get a sergeant of arms, get somebody to collect minutes, uh, a president and a vice president, and after the first year, you get you a president emeritus to kind of oversee things and make sure it goes correctly. But that's what you need. Like that's that's, that's gonna be, hey, that's what we need. Now you got me thinking like they need a G7 meeting, like all the gangs just sit together and yeah. Yeah, here's what we can say, can't yeah. say, what we we going to put this together. Yeah, that's a and massacre we waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they already hate each other. Now they're going to be Italian correcting, used each to do it. <laughs> correcting each other. Correcting each other. You uh, need that, man. It, oh, it, I mean, it's the only God. way that we can get through this because it's, it's a lot of like unintentional disrespect that happens. And he's like, I didn't, I didn't know. Like I was just... I was just walking, bro. I just liked uh, stingrays. <laughs> nope. I just like. I stingrays. wish you would like a stingray Shit. on Crenshaw. And... You wear that. You wear that hat or that shirt in the wrong area. Ooh. Man, a Ooh. stingray. That's why I. I literally. I, my my favorite hat was the Pittsburgh Penguins. I was like, <sighs> nobody has hockey. I hope. <laughs> Man, you got that big P on walking down. Oh the no, not that. It was a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a penguin. Yeah, 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 you're thinking yeah, yeah. of the pirates. I'm thinking about the pirates. You're right. Not that one either, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely just, not that one. Just, just don't like say. sports outwardly out here. When I first moved out here, I found a barber on Crenshaw, mm-hmm. Crenshaw and Rodeo. 
Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. he used to always wear the the, the Washington hat, the mm-hmm. W. Mm-hmm. And one day I just asked him, I was like, hey, man. You a sports guy? <laughs> what that hat stand for? He was just like, he was cutting my hair when I asked. He was like, <laughs> and just kept going. Never answered the question. And uh, the fact that he locked worse. eyes with me and then laughed, I was like, all right, leave it alone. <laughs> leave it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. And the only reason I was asking is so I would be aware when I see people out, like, all right, I'm not, you know, you know, nod and be like, hey, I know what you're a part of. Yeah. Right? right? Uh, but I just left it alone after that. I didn't know. Really, and I actually found a, a barber in Hollywood. I was like, you know what? This, <laughs> I don't need this kind yeah, of energy. It's, 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 it's like, I, I mean, started this, going to great clips. Yeah, we're not we're not geographically compatible when it comes to like me coming all the way over here. But you, know. you unknowingly put him in a potentially life threatening <laughs> scenario. I mean, he was already wearing the hat, but he. He, you put him in a position where he's like, oh, I, I gotta, I gotta say where I'm from. Well, here's the thing: we're... in in the fullest form, and you don't know anybody who it says it was just he... me and him in the barber shop at that time. Oh, really? <laughs> it was just me and him. So I was like, you could have told me, but the he fact that told it you. didn't, I was just like, I'm gonna leave it alone. He's like, I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock, <laughs> and I pre- I appreciate the professionalism. Thank yeah, you. It was very some things I don't, some things Thank I don't need you. to know. It ain't for me. So you know, I will say this: uh, <laughs> moving out here was very much an adjustment. Oh yeah, uh, and a lot of times I had to go back home to get that. That, that 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 recharge because anytime you do something like that you feel um uh, just not yourself and At if all. you've been feeling not yourself I want to let you know that this episode is sponsored by better help um <clears throat> better help is amazing right first of all therapy in itself is amazing and better help makes therapy so easy because you have so many options when it comes to it first of all you sign up online you complete a survey and you are licensed. I mean, you are paired with a licensed therapist with under, within under 48 hours, which is completely unheard of. You can do your sessions from anywhere in the world. You can log in anywhere in the world and you don't have to do just FaceTime or video chat. You could just do chatting via text. You could do a phone call. Um, it makes it so easy. And if for some reason, if you're not meshing well with your uh, assigned licensed professional therapist, you can... Get a new therapist in the same amount of time and no additional charge to you. Um, I'm very big on mental health, especially in the black and brown community. Mm -hmm. We grew up a lot of time in houses where we were told you don't talk about family business outside of this Mm -hmm. house. But you know what? Sometimes you got to talk about family business outside of that house. Sometimes it's healthy for you to talk about family business outside of that house. Sometimes it's healthy for you just to talk. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to and listen who has no bias towards you. And therapy can definitely help you do that. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so that you can keep supporting others. A lot of times, you're the strong friend in your group. And you don't realize that you need to take time out. Because strong friends need strong friends, too. Mm. The same way that therapists need therapists. There are tons of therapists who only work with therapists. So if these people are licensed and they're professional enough to handle your problems and they still have to go see somebody, what makes you think that you are so equipped and so strong that you don't need to talk to somebody? Let it go. This isn't an ego thing. This isn't a strength thing. This is about your best well-being. So if I'm telling you all this, you guys already know that we have a hookup for you because that's what we do. So I want you guys to go check out betterhelp.com slash DIYS today and get 10% off your first month. That's better. Help, H-E-L-P dot com slash D-I-Y-S and get 10% off your first month. It's a great ad. Oh, um, really good. Slide that thing on in. Yeah, there. I, I, I use better help. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were solid. Should. And it's like it, my therapist is in like New Orleans and mm. cool Cool, 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 cool person to talk to because I, cause I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the big bro for all my friends. Mm-hmm. I'm the one, and I, my thought was always like, who saved Superman? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm struggling, and like <laughs> yeah. you, you're saying, like I'm a preacher's kid. Yeah. So we were just talking, <clears throat> just pray. Yes. I'm like, I, I, I did that daily, <laughs> four times actually, <laughs> and it's like 8 a.m. and it's like I'm, I'm tired of praying. I mean, hey. I'm gonna keep praying. Yes. But, this, but, 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 but right now, yeah, mm-hmm, I need somebody to talk. God to. may not get back to you f- until five to ten business days. <laughs> So if you praying on something and waiting for <laughs> an immediate answer, you got five to ten business he days. Backed yeah, he backed up. Yeah, he backed up. He's backed up. His Y'all assistant is on vacation. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, you know, by the time his sister come back, he goes on vacation. You know what I'm saying? He had to take Completely three days reasonable. off. It was April. 
You know, so it was like, you know, sometimes you need somebody to talk to. If he hey. did have a prayer like Q, mm-hmm. would people who don't really believe in him like that be kind of... Oh, yeah, you'd be so far down my <laughs> queue, bro. You don't even pay me tithes? If you, yeah. If you like a adjacent religion Listen, or one you, that don't Listen, if really... you're not subscribed to Christ, you have to subscribe to the hotline. Like, if you're not a, a full... Fledge, acknowledging Christian, then you can't just you ain't jumping the line. You first yeah. of all you gotta sign up for it. Cause yeah. I know somebody on the inside. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, so I'm already connected. I can walk straight in. Amen. But you, uh, we don't know you, bro. You ain't looking yeah, familiar. Yeah, look at you. you go, go. Then L.A. questions your Christianity mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. How like, so? Okay, let's say we both want this water. I'm gonna call this water. It's a roll. It's a t- it's a roll. Now we all feel like we did good. Now we're all praying for this role. Mm-hmm. So who? So if God doesn't answer mm-hmm. uh, so many saying. times, you just like you know what? I'm not gonna pray as much. No, think about timelines though. Multiverse. Uh-huh. All right. So this is the role we all go for it. Yeah. Right. God gives it to you mm-hmm. and doesn't give it to us because of something else for us. Mm. He gave it to you because your timeline went that way. So technically, all three <clears throat> prayers were answered, but you got the role. <laughs> but, we thir- but we thirsty right now. <laughs> See, I ain't thirsty five years from now. I'm thirsty now. Hey, man, Moses had to part a whole ocean that he had to walk through. It. <laughs> that, you got to work for it, you know? <laughs> you got that little cough that you can't. <laughs> You need that water. <laughs> it's not your turn. Hey man, at LA we either jade you or get you closer to God. That's that's what that's what I feel. And it started with jading, uh-huh. and then I started to understand things a little bit more. And when I pulled back and was like, you know what, life be lifing. It does. It and does. I can't control nothing. Listen, you're alone for the ride. A lot at the same time. I'm alone for the ride. ride. So that's when I Listen. was like, all right, God, I'm just gonna watch. Life mm-hmm. is a balance of. You being in an ocean, in a raft, mm-hmm. with an oar. Mm. And sometimes that sea is going to be smooth sailing. And the, sun is, the, the, the sun is out and the, the sea is, is smooth. And you can get to the direction you need. And sometimes that shit is a fucking storm. Your you ass. just got to hold on for dear life yeah. and trust that it, it's, it's going to play out. You know, And I feel like the, the, the rewards go to those that can endure, and that's not telling people to sit and suffer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there are sometimes, like, I've been, I was talking to my boy Dion. I was like, man, there have been a lot of people in my life, not a lot, but a number of people in my life that I realized going into this year that, you know, their presence didn't serve me and I wasn't able to serve them. And I've had to kind of fall back on it, whether they were bringing the wrong energy to my life mm-hmm. or I noticed that they were those people that always have something negative, say, or trying to call you something negative and that brings your energy down mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Energy but vampires. <clears throat> I'm in a way different place right now than I was last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a lot of a lot of blessings and I feel like those blessings have come because I didn't continue to do the same things I was doing last year. Mm-hmm. I made some hard decisions where it required me removing people from my life. I made hard decisions whether it was like, I'm not going to go to the club tonight. I'm going to go home. I'm going to study this audition more to make sure I give it my all and I don't just mail it in. Nice. Uh, I'm not going to take this this trip for this show that's going to just get me $500. I'll miss out on this $500 and missing out on that $500 made me available to get a show that was going to pay me $2,500. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I had to put myself sometimes in uncomfortable situations, which I feel like you have to do to witness your greatness. When you move out here and you only got $500, $1,500, $3,000 in your bank account and your rent is basically $3,000, mm. you put yourself against the wall. Mm-hmm. But when you're against that wall, you are you are challenged to come up with the best and the most Mm -hmm. uh, creative decision to fight for your life. That's when that fight or flight kicks in, and you either going to go back home or you're going to figure that shit the fuck out. How long have you been here? I've been here since 2009. Since 2009. I moved here in 2004. Right after high school, I was like, I'm out. Did college here. We didn't get paid to be on college here. We got $950 for that entire season. Maybe around... 2008, I started doing clinical trials. Have you ever done oh, clinical shit. trials? Wait What's a second. That? Wait, 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 wait. Before What's you that? wait a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a father 
a business owner, oh, shit. a property owner, a comedian, actor, and content creator on the show. He's also from my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, hey. and he is just a dope ass motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen his commercials, you've seen his set, you've seen his show on HGTV with him and his brother Brian Property and flipping it, one of the only black lead shows Crazy. on HGTV. Crazy. Welcome to the show, my homeboy, motherfucker, Willie and we did okay. that late. We got right into it. We did. We were talking <laughs> about interesting black guy. lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting guy. <laughs> Couldn't glaze over that. Hey, yeah, roll the minutes. tape. Roll the tape. 35 minutes in. <laughs> and a, and a Dave Chappelle, two oh, back-to-back Chappelle man. stories that were just... So you're doing clinical trials. This is where he's taking medicine mm. or food or drinks that the FDA has not approved mm-hmm. yet. To see what the effect is guinea on pig? human trial. Yeah, I was a human guinea pig. Whoa! So like they had one for like this Alzheimer's medicine, and it was and it, and they and they pay. Yeah, it's like sixty three hundred dollars for a fourteen day uh, in inpatient thing. Why is it that much? Because they pharmaceuticals. Because he's shit out of his dick now. That's what I'm saying. Like, do they tell you the what could happen? You they don't know. They're waiting. They're waiting this to find out what the yeah. side effects are. So they're like, take these and write down how you feel every day. Yeah. And then. But the side effects of the ones that come out are crazy. <laughs> they well, yeah, that's why. That's that's what that's what, the, the shit they'd be like. Some may see. Yeah. yeah. That's what y'all did. Yeah. That's what y'all got. We to was with doing it. that. Oh shit. <laughs> so they created the list that the guy reads really fast at the end. Yeah. Like, how do you feel today? Oh. I'm about to die. And it's like, well, it may cause death with people. That- <laughs> Damn. That's insane. Did it look, what did it look like? Was it like a white no, room? No, 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 no. It was, it, you're in this a hospital. It's a, it's a whole hospital. So there'll be like 16 of us. Mm-hmm. And they'll give us each one of us a pill. And two of us have placebos. That's just how they measure whatever. And so, like, I did the spinal tap. So what they did was they, they, made, you, they made us take this... Uh, this uh, appeal, because they wanted to see how much of this uh, medicine was going to your brain. Right. So. What was this supposed to do? It's supposed to, they're trying to see how much of the medicine, it's supposed to help with Alzheimer's, either slow it down or whatever. They don't tell us. They're like, hey, you're trying out an Alzheimer's drug, QZX4444. They don't want to tell you what it is because one thing that you would do, if you know that there's a, med- if you knew that there's a, uh, let's say, a pharmaceutical, uh, whatever, treatment that's coming out, mm. Ahead of time, nigga, I'm going to the stock. I'm telling y'all, mm-hmm. like, hey man, they working mm-hmm. on this uh, fucking all- yeah. Uh, man, uh, inside the trader. Yeah. Uh, you might want to put ten racks on that right there. <laughs> on that right there, right there. And so, so yeah, so we wouldn't know what drug it was. Mm-hmm. So what they did is after um, like a day, they would lean you back on you. It'd be like two guys in a room. So they made us lean. It's like an epidural. So you you'll hunch over. And then they get this needle that's like this long. That's what you lost. Me. I was about to say. And they yeah, stick it up your back, and then they drain all what the you spinal mean up fluid. Up your back. They go up like up the spine. Parallel to it. So they yeah. Go up the it spine. hurt. Nah, it could, because it's so it's all the spi- all the that's where all your nerves are. Mm-hmm. But you, oh, so if they miss, you mean? Yeah. So okay. the dude next to me missed. They they, they the nigga passed out. This day one. Nigga, this is day. No, this is like day two. Hold on. Right, so we take the medicine. Are, are, they, are they? Hold on. You ever watch a movie? You be like, you can't sit down and watch the medicine. It's just too much. Hold Pause on. It. <laughs> Listen. So are they are they numbing your back before they stick you with this? Yeah. They'll, okay. They'll, they'll numb our yeah. They numb our backs. So he passed out immediately. So yeah. So it's, if 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 the needle touches any of your any any of these little uh, nerves. you can either get like this numbing feel. Like you ever hit the funny bone? You mm-hmm. get that down your leg. Or uh, you could pass out, like because you you hit you hitting the nerve. It hit the nerve to do instantly. Boom, boom. So were you allowed to be like no, no? I'm I could have been like no. So he so they like hey take it out take it out so they take it out and like maybe like a couple seconds later he kind of comes back too, and he's like is it done? He's like well you you can't do the spinal tap so they end up kicking him out. So he gets like five hundred dollars. They give him like five hundred dollars. They kick him out because they can't test him. But they offered six grand. So he went in there for sixty three, and it 63. messed up. You should be getting twelve. No, <laughs> you, you, you sign you all the paperwork. Whole, all fourteen days. Yeah, you sign That's this paper. Wild. This paperwork says that whatever. So he's like, uh, Willie, you okay? I'm like, nigga, I need sixty three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't. No one does clinical trials because they just right. like, what you doing tomorrow? Hey, listen. I don't care if I pass out. Do it. Just, just keep going. Just keep. <laughs> if the needle's already in there, you have you halfway done. Don't pull That's out. Wild. All sixteen of y'all probably had a wild story. That nigga was yeah. busting me. <laughs> just going. <laughs> Damn. Don't pull out, bro. Go ahead and just drop <laughs> just that whole thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do that whole thing. And there was a lot of clinical trials. So, like, they have some ones that you can... I would love for y'all to look this shit up. Like, they have one where uh, it was $50,000. They wanted to try this uh, heart stop medication. So they were literally going to stop your heart and try this, whatever this procedure is, and then you know, coming back from literally coming back from death, yeah. you would have to fifty rags. I didn't qualify. I I I applied, but they didn't. They didn't. You would have done it. Oh fuck yeah, man! I'm suicidal. I was we'll... suicidal. Like at least could send the money to my family. Shh. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm joking. But oh. at the same time, <laughs> no, I would have. I definitely would have done it. I mean, I mean, I'm weird heart like stop that. medication is pretty crazy. That's that's wow. because how they how how these all these medicines have to be tried on humans. But hey, you listen. know it stops your heart. At fifty thousand, <laughs> wow though, I would be like, okay, okay, I will sign the paperwork, <laughs> but I need to see a defibrillator in the room first before I do it, and also I need a licensed doctor here who has been doing CPR for over twenty. You about years. to spend your fifty thousand on all that? No, nah, no, nah, fuck that on their budget. <laughs> they got like, That's my right. That's, 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 that's my right. That's I need that in my room. I need that in my trailer before I can let y'all do this. I need to see this type of shit. But I mean, fifty thousand. Wow. Damn. I would. I'd have to sleep on but it. They stopping your heart. They like that's not. So that's that a quick happen. note for you. Yeah, heart stop medication. Absolutely. You, oh, you, it's not like, you must have been doing good in your life. <laughs> 50000 to he, stop your heart? You ain't fucked enough, Pat. That let me know right there. <laughs> I've had some woman lay some puss on me before. I, I could have swore I died. I was like, can't nothing in the world feel this fucking good. Look, I got to be dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Am I dead? I got to be dead. I don't want that. Dead. Dead. You in heaven. Yeah, right. I got to be dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done Paul? it for less. Absolutely. Got to keep the... No, nah, I don't want... Listen, don't let me tell you something. Sense. When I was in college and I was getting my, my full SCD panel, mm. every time... I open up the email or I listen to the because I'm playing porn. You listen to it on mm -hmm. the, on the phone mm -hmm. every time it got to the HIV, my heart stopped. So uh -huh. I was like, "Nigga, I've been doing. I've been made for this. Yeah. I've, been, I've been made. For, I've been practicing for this all my college years. All my collegiate level my education stopped. would collegiate led me to this level. point right here. So, oh yeah, fuck it. I've been doing this before. Just just say, it. just do it in the Planned Parenthood oh, voice, and I'm okay. My God. Damn. Yes. So which ones did you do? I've done three Did you get spinal the taps. Oh, I've done okay. three spinal taps. I've done one where they Dang. stuck this straw up your nose and go down here and they pumped water inside me to flush my system out. So, and, like I was it got to a point where I was shitting out just pure water. Cause they want to clean out your system with so, the thing still up your nose. Well, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's how that's how the the solution just kind of just Damn. dripped down there. And so what they did was they gave you this medicine, <laughs> and they wanted to see how much of this medicine came out in your stools. How much are you shitting out? Cause you know there's a certain level of whatever that doesn't, yeah, doesn't, doesn't get, get processed. processed. It just gets, and this is yeah. how they find out. Mm -hmm. So they after I took the medicine and whatever, it cleaned me out. They took the medicine. They gave me like a burger, like a half of a burger and like seven fries. Eat that. They waited eight hours. They put the solution back into me, and then they I shit. And then they took those studies, and that was thirty two fifty. So they pumped they pumped it out, and then you. Went to another room to shit, or they were just yeah, no, no, you no, 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 hands out, like, all right, give me your stool. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, a it Dixie comes cup. out, they just smash it, and be like, all right, where the petri dishes? Let's do it. <laughs> I will never that was, name <laughs> that was it. Just all right, I'm sterile now. Like, Damn, that was the experiment. Give me some of this. <laughs> I will never name her because y'all know her, but there was another comedian, she was in this study too, and we kind of was like the boo, the boo boo one, the, yeah, the boo boo one. We just kind of. <laughs> Los Angeles Life be life Life be life <laughs> Is that what, is the, what What do those things Be considered One of the craziest things You ever done for money Nah It was probably That one The nose one Was probably The craziest one Because Man. what they When they did this and The way that They would kick you out Some this, oh, this is the wrong place to say this. Right, wrong and right. This is because I'm just now saying it out loud. So they stick it in your nose, and they, in order to get the uh, tube down here, they have to. You have to have like a, a high gag reflex. 
Because some people will get hit right here and then they would throw up. Yeah. They would throw up. So when they threw up, they kicked them out of the study. Because you can't stick the tube down there. So I'm over here. <laughs> so you so, just sucked a lot of long nipples. So this is the one you, <laughs> This is one of the ones you got paid for. So you were 28 you made, years old when you, you figured out your secret made, power. You made it. So you made it. <laughs> this you nigga made. was killing torpedo pops when he was a kid. <laughs> that bump pop man was so disturbed when he gave him that popsicle and Willie just stuck the whole thing he out probably, about the wooden stick. He was probably expecting to kick him out. <laughs> He was just like, oh, damn, wait a minute. Wait, hey, what's going on? Hey, really, what's going on? Were you, were you looking at him, you eye contact? He winked at him. <laughs> Can I take my glasses off of this? <laughs> we got his whole mouth off, and he's like, more. It's like, it, we don't need to go it? any further. More. <laughs> Willie showed up the day after the trials ended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we done? <laughs> nah, I see a hose in the back. Come on. <laughs> yeah, in the back. That's, that's, when, they, that's when they changed his name on the side to Wet Willie. <laughs> what you do? What you do earlier? <laughs> wet Wild <laughs> Willie. <laughs> Give me another one. You don't gotta pay me or anything. <laughs> oh, oh wow. I had, I had oh, to do that baby. to survive out here. We didn't have Instacart in 2007, 2008. This is true. This we is, didn't have Uber and all these other this quick ways. You had to get a job. <laughs> Let me take out something humbling. The test. Uh -huh. I, when I moved out here, uh, was trying to, you know, be a purist and not get a real job and all of this shit. So, <laughs> I was an assistant to Tangerine. Tangerine Morton. I, I know that. was her assistant. And Shut her and C.T. were together. They weren't married at the time, but they were together. And C.T. would be on the couch playing the video game and watching the movie. And Tangerine had this little this little closet that was probably meant for shoes, but she would do her self-tapes and Zoom calls in there. But I was sitting there, and I would type on this computer and I would update her IMDB and I would do a lot of shit and she you know gets give me like 40 50 dollars a day or something like that yeah, to yeah. run little errands and shit like that but I was like I don't want to get a real job I need to make a little extra money so at the time I had a V8 mm -hmm. I had an Infinity uh the old one that I had in the, the first time I got it and when I got the car I didn't realize it took premium glass and I didn't I didn't I just didn't budget for Mm -hmm. Premium gas, so I was like I had to do a little something, something, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to blow through my my savings. I had money, but I was like, I'm I'm a prepper, so I'm like, oh, I need to keep a certain amount in here every day. So I just need to get enough to do this, and then I was taking a little out of end jobs. One time, me and me and Clint Coley, hmm. this nigga Clint, <laughs> singer Clint had signed up on Fiverr, and this lady hit him up to paint her ceiling in Beverly Hills. Mm. Now this is like a, a 12, 15 foot ceiling. Exposed beams, like exposed wooden beams, and he didn't never painted anything. No, we painted it. Oh, but we had never painted before. That's what I'm saying. It was <laughs> we didn't even have a ladder. We we pulled up, and the, I pulled up, and the goddamn Ford Focus hatchback this with dude. no ladder. Okay. Just paint and brushes. Not even that. She said, "I'll take care of the paint." We just showed up and clothes. We she told us what she wanted, what part, and and, and all of that, and she, and Clint was like, "All right, cool." Let's get started. I was like, we got to move this first. This is nigga. so funny, This nigga bro. Clint was ready to just hop on a ladder and start back. We got to move this first. Did you know about primer and all that stuff? No primer, no nothing. He got up there after we moved the furniture. He got up there and started painting. I was like, nigga, we got to put we got to put the, the, tape. the, no paint, tape? the tape along the... the so y'all didn't even try to YouTube it. <laughs> bro, we... No. Like, it's hard. And, to just put paint on the wall. And what then it doing? wasn't like a flat ceiling because it has the beams there and then it was like mm. an arch ceiling mm. on the edge mm. so it mm. did like this so you gotta it was the worst fucking job of my life I hated every and it took us like four days to do it Damn. cause after we finished it on the second day she was like I still kinda like I think I'm gonna need a, a second or maybe a third coat on it and I'm like fuck <laughs> Fuck! This lady was paying us three hundred and fifty dollars for this shit. Right? Damn, four days? She, yes, but she ended up she ended up giving us like four hundred. I mean, eight hundred total because it took so long, and then her kids kept running in and out, and they would run mm. under the fucking ladder. Mm. Mm. It's bad luck for them. Yeah, it for was, them. It's for them. <laughs> Not for the kids. <laughs> How does that work? Is luck have a radius? If you on the ladder, does it? <laughs> no, it's only if you're walking. <laughs> Bro, I was. 
Um, Are you sure? I yeah. never <laughs> would ever do that. It was such a scoring <laughs> experience for me. I need some stuff around the house done, like some handyman stuff around the house yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. And like seven people have like, yo, just go on Fiverr, just go on Fiverr. Oh. I can't even bring myself to like download the app. Damn. Or going to, like that's how bad it's scored. It was hot in that motherfucker. Yeah, because it was summer and she was trying not to run the air because <laughs> she was gone and the kid, bro, we're sweating. Damn. We're sweating trying to do this shit. Sweat oh running in your God. eyes. Y'all you don't even got hilarious. a chance because your head is tilted back. It was so bad. And I don't know why you could really tell when something is painted, like by somebody who don't know, like like the little patches and stuff and the unevenness. So the I wouldn't even the way that they roll. I'd be so scared, bro. To, yeah, right. We were eating sandwiches from Seven Eleven and painting this lady's house because we were that broke. And the, and, the, and the trenches. I mean, the, when I tell you humble beginnings, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I thought, like I I used to pick up cans. At, at Marty's in Cahokia. Uh-huh. You know, Cahokia is on the east side. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, when I had my kid in high school, I wasn't old enough to work. I had him when I was 14. So mm-hmm. I was 14, 15. I was going over to Marty's, picking up cans, stripping cars of aluminum, breaking down, alternates, getting the copper and mm-hmm. shit out of that. And then you have to fill a barrel up. You fill a barrel up with all of this shit and you make it $30. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You make it $30. Damn. It was fucking ridiculous. And so... That shit just took me back to that. I was like, I'll never do this shit again. Never I'm gonna again. Figure it out. Never again. I will never, again. never do this shit again. Who does live out here has been no joke. <laughs> From the amount of couch surfing and bicycles stolen before you had a hats car. Hats you don't know how to wear. Just not, hats you didn't know how to wear. <laughs> it was a rough place. <laughs> yeah, Lee, and people be looking at you like, how you stay out here? Like, people, and it's not, this is an age-old one, like, people see the success. People don't see what it this see other the stuff. Like, this people, is the first time I told people about clinical trials and that wow. type of shit. Uh, yeah, that, never, that is, that is, that's, I mean, but like, when you look at where you came from, mm-hmm. real quick, I'm, I'm gonna give you the quick flowers. Uh-huh. We met in passing and held in conversation, found out we were both from St. Louis, and I, I saw you in Burbank that one time on the street. It was like a festival mm-hmm. that had blown mm-hmm. up the street. And I think at that time, you were on either a T Mobile or a Verizon commercial. Mm-hmm. It was like you with a family and shit like that. Yeah. And I said, like, I see y'all here, Willie. And I was, Willie was racking up commercials. I was like, okay, my nigga doing it. And then shortly after that, this motherfucker, he had already told me he was doing property, right? He was doing property back in St. Louis. Uh, shortly after that, this nigga landed the HGTV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him and his brother fixing up houses and buildings. In St. Louis, yeah, That's insane. you went from huh. nigga like huh. to here. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying regardless of what the, what transpired after that, you made it from the bottom. You made it out here in L.A. You're doing your dream. You're mm. getting to do comedy. You're involving your your son and your mm-hmm. kids in your your content, bro. Even if you're not like the more older, the older you get, the more you start to adjust. What you quantify success as? Yeah, because it's not always from a monetary standpoint. Like sometimes being able to live your dream and just being able to say, "I can go with it, get whatever the fuck I want to eat right now," is the success. Because I remember when, like, I do Seven Eleven now to keep me humble, and it's because certain shit I like. But I remember when it wasn't an option. Like them hot dogs was the. Fu- I remember my mom would put one hundred and fifty dollars when the, when my family first moved out here. She put an extra hundred fifty dollars in my account. This is before I was working at All Def and everything. Uh-huh. This was when I was just getting odd one off dates for Tough Mudder, and I was working at uh, CarMax. And she would put one hundred fifty dollars in my account, and that would be enough money for us to like get some groceries, and then we would order pizza on a Saturday night, and each one of us would have our own pizza, and then we might stream a movie, and that was the bee's knees. That was mm-hmm. a fucking amazing Saturday night for me. We all got our own pizza. We ain't gonna eat all of it, so we're gonna have some for tomorrow. You're excited about waking up eating. That Dang. was that was what I looked forward to sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, and so the older you get, the more you like, I don't need to be ridiculously wealthy. I don't need a Rick Ross mansion. That would be cool, but honestly, I, I don't know. I don't need that. Now that I know more about how money works, 
you know, that would be better for like, you know, renting that out to sheiks and shit when they come to the U.S. than me living in it. It's nothing I could do with 40 some odd rooms. <laughs> you think you can. You think that shit is dope. So you gotta think about the fucking it. upkeep like of that shit. shit. Cold as 40 hell. some rooms <laughs> will get dusty as fuck. You gotta heat and cool 40 some rooms. That all of that land has to be maintenance. Yeah. He has animals. All of these vehicles, that's a lot. That's a lot. I can scale my shit back. Tremendously, and but sometimes you don't realize that until you get older, yeah. and that's kind of what I was saying, T- piggybacking on, like, um, sometimes you have to do things differently to get what you need or what you want, and switching up a lot of shit that I did this year from what I was doing last year has allowed me to gain the goals that I wanted, but you still have to have that discipline. Can with you that tell new- us what, what 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 any of that was that you switched up? Um, well, one of the things, like I said, I started taking auditions way more seriously. Mm-hmm. I would get auditions from my agent, and I'm like, all right, cool. I look over the script. All right, cool. I'll do this in a little bit. Forget about it. Now it's a couple hours before this shit is due, and now I'm trying to, like, scramble, you know, go yeah. scramble mm-hmm. get off book. But even with auditions, you don't have to be off book. But, like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. I'll do the lights like this, and I'm not really positioning mm-hmm. the lights the way they need to. Now my face is dark, or I might not have read all the way through it, and I didn't read... The, the slate instructions, because like now it's different. Sometimes they want you to put your pronouns in there. Sometimes they want you to say if you have your uh your your booster or how many boosters you have, if you're local, all of that type yep. of shit. Just being more thorough and more intentional with my actions. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Not trying to hang out. It's like like uh, people know that me and my wife are poly. Mm-hmm. So like you know before we started playing together, we were playing separately, mm-hmm. and so you know. Maybe instead of going to the comedy club, me and the shit go get drinks or some shit like that. It was like, at this point now, I was like, I don't, I don't need none of that shit. Yeah, I, I don't it like, I don't even get the same joy and fulfillment that I used to get from like talking to new chicks like that. Like shit, it just doesn't excite me the way it used to. Yeah, yeah And some yeah, of that yeah. is getting older. Some of it's also like just <clears throat> realizing my most precious and valuable resource is my time. Mm. Do I want to spend that shit spending two hundred dollars on drinks and dinner or some chicks that I may smash? I don't even know if I'm going to like this chick. And I was like, yeah, you know, if you're open or a swinger, you don't have to, like, really converse and hang with that person. But, like, I'm still giving you some time and some energy. Yeah. Are you worth my time and energy? Yeah. Just because you got a fat ass or a cute face, that, was, that shit don't even move me like that. If you have a you have a good personality and a, a great oh, sense of humor, that shit is so much more sexier to me than, than a fat ass and that. So changing different things like that, investing more time in my family, you know what I'm saying, even though I have the 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 um, leeway to go out and, and date other people, I, I'm in a place comfortably now at my house where I don't want to be. Le- I don't want to leave that much. Yeah, I'm comfortable at home, so I'd rather just be at the crib, chilling, mm-hmm. and like that energy, that focus, that groundedness has really reflected in my recent wins. I feel like because I'm more focused on what I want, making sure my family's secure, making sure that the kid is good, so anything she wants to do, I can help to support her with financially or mentally or emotionally, mm-hmm. and then also just being more present, being more intentional with my actions and being more aware of the people I'm surrounding myself with and so we can you know, grow together. It ain't like <clears throat> nobody want to be rich yeah. by themselves. That right. shit ain't no fun. So if I can throw Pat something, he can throw me something, I can throw my homeboy something, I can throw my homegirl something who's a chef. Oh, you looking for a chef? I got a homegirl that do this. Right. Are you looking for a driver? My homeboy, got he just started his fleet. He got three vehicles. Boom, boom, boom. You should get with him. Black mm-hmm. on biz, boom. So now I'm more so focused about us growing together Yeah. and that, that really alleviates a lot of time for the fuckery. For real, bro. So that's that's more so what I'm doing now. Just focus on that type of shit. Time management. Time and energy management, actually. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Because the energy part is very important. Very mm-hmm. important. Very important. Yeah. I was kicking it. <laughs> Random ass story. Then I'm, I'm going to go on. Mm-hmm. I got this role because somebody I know recommended me to somebody else I know. And somebody else I know saw my face in a casting room or in a board room and they were talking about this new show and they were like, oh, this person be good. She was like, oh, this is my such and such friend, right? She recommended me. I get a call. Hey, you want to do this role? Hmm. All right, cool. Uh, sure. What is it about? I'll send you Jack. Send the deck right over. Like, cool. She calls me back. They're thinking about you for this for this person right here. Now, the budget is low because the director is producing it himself and he's funding it out of his pocket. Way lower than all. I mean, you know, I, I get booked. You know, you, you're a guest star or something like that. That's, Four or five digits, easy, right? Three. You're talking about three per episode, three three digits per episode. But I'm like, I know this person, I trust this person. They got a great track record with me and like professionals, so we take it. 
Last week, we started shooting. Now, we're shooting extensive because I, I have to leave. I go back on tour on, on Friday. So we're shooting heavy. And we, I mean, Wednesday was a fucking 15-hour shoot day, mm. right? Just fucking insane. Tuesday night, the person that, that connected me and everything got me roll. She was like, hey, come out to, to, to dinner with me. I want you to meet some of my friends, right? I'm like, ah, I'm kind of trying to. She was like, oh, well, if you can make it, I would love you to you know, meet my friends. So I say, fuck it. Go out to dinner. I'm hanging with my homegirl, like four Wild and Out girls, Tamala Jones from Booty Call and a lot of other movies. Neo's there with some people. And it's crazy. We go to like three in the morning. Yeah. I go home, go to sleep, wake up, shoot for 16 hours. Next day, we shoot for eight hours. I go home, read my script. Next day, I shoot for, I think I was shooting six hours. I got off, took a quick nap, did a show. Then my homegirl called me again. She was like, come over to my house. I have my people over. Get over there. More stores. Neo, a couple other people. We out there till like one or two in the morning. And it was a great time. Fucking great time. I went, I'm glad I went because I got to establish like a cool relationship with Neo. Yeah. It's like, nigga, the next day I was like, I can't do this shit no more. I can't be hanging out like this and give 100% on set because something is going to, to suffer from it. Yeah. And so I was like, Nick, if, you, if, I don't, if I'm not done by 11 to 12 o'clock, I just got to leave because my time and my energy is so important. I can't be the best me on set and give the performance that I want to continue to help make me a household name mm. if I'm just trying to kick it and shit. So I go in, I make a lasting impression. If a person fuck with me hard enough, they'll get my contact or they'll figure yeah. out how to get my contact. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you got to leave them wanting more. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every comic looks for that big ass roar to get off the stage. Sometimes you're not. Yeah. If you did a great job, you did a great job. Yeah. You don't have to finish with the grand finale. Leave them motherfuckers wanting more. Yeah. So they be like, man, well, I got to find out where the next place this person going to mm -hmm. be. But we always feel like we got to go so hard. It's like, nah, I'm reeling back. I'm yeah. reeling back so much and so fucking hard. Like, I used to love going on vacation. I still do. But now I'm just going to, like, if I need to get away, me and the family just go somewhere. And I can work from that place for a week. Even if it's, like, Palm Springs or Joshua Tree or something like that. Mm -hmm. But my, my, my mental space and my peace is of the utmost importance of me right now. I, I got to do that. I got to right. protect it at all costs. So. I think your body can actually be charged, even if it's, <laughs> like... It, people think you got to be like, oh, I'm going to go to Greece to recharge. It's mm -hmm. not like that. You can literally just get a nice hotel somewhere and mm -hmm. just separate yourself from your normal environment. Because I think that we really need to, it, it might already be studied, but we really need to study that feeling you get when you come back from vacation. Because it do feel like you're recharged and ready mm -hmm. to do ready to do more and, and be more productive. And I don't think you need to do all that much to, to get that. Like you said, you can just separate yourself for a few days mm -hmm. and even if everybody comes with you I think that change of environment kind of is like putting us on the charger and mm -hmm. you just kind of like need to do that a lot of people really don't do that <laughs> I have to go somewhere where <coughs> like Joshua Tree is perfect for me Joshua Tree Palm Springs because I'm two hours away because mm -hmm. if I'm just like at a different hotel close by and somebody hits me like yo we're here tonight I'll be tempted to leave yeah. right. so I have to remove myself from my normal environment like really like at least an hour and a half mm -hmm. so I'm not tempted to try to make a drive and all of that shit because I will get caught up in it yeah, thinking yeah, that yeah. FOMO is real like I didn't really realize how this. that shit is real when mm -hmm. I'm out of town when my agent calls me like hey you can you be here tomorrow I'm like I'm, I'm, I told you that I'm in such and such day. I can't mm -hmm. make it. And it'd be like an audition. And in the back of my mind, I'd be like, fuck. Yeah. That could have been the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can't you can't live on the what ifs and could have been, should have right. been. You'll drive yourself crazy. With man. Shit, man. Hell yeah. You got to really remember, like, what's for you is for you. Got to make a way. You know, he ain't bring mm -hmm. you this far just to bring you this far. No. That's really what I remind myself. All the trials and shit, I'd be like, man. I got to be here for a reason, bro. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, to be a testimony to somebody else that might be going through that shit. Ooh. You got to be here. Because I know, you know, you've talked about it a little online. You just recently had a very, very life-changing occurrence in your life. Yeah. And I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about our... our, our no, our, I can talk about it. Um, and this is, this is uh, mm -hmm. something very serious. Uh, a lot of people may not know about this, but um, I'll let you take it from here. Uh, my daughter, 17 years old, passed away on March 5th to this year. And, uh, Sorry to hear that, um, appreciate it. But it's one of those things where you start to just look at what does it all mean mm -hmm. and all, but death is either very 
There's a lot. I mean, I'm saying this in like a couple different in a couple different ways. It's very eye opening for one, mm-hmm. because I'm like she wasn't she wasn't the one I would have gambled on. Mm-hmm. Like I thought it would be me, maybe Mal, maybe anybody, not her, because mm-hmm. she's gonna be the one to take care of take care of me when I get older. Mm-hmm. And Malcolm was on FaceTime with her because they FaceTime every night. She died in her sleep. He saw her go to sleep, thought nothing of it, not knowing that his sister was not was gonna not wake up mm-hmm. the next day, and for me to have to tell him this, three days prior to this, three days prior to her passing away, his best friend just got shot in the face at a at, at, wow. with an altercation at the gas station. So he's gone through it already. I'm mm-hmm. talking him off the ledge. Already, like, come on, man, you know, do this for do this for Andrew. Just come on, man. Woo, woo. Then they get the call. Hey, Will, just gotta let you know. Go, you, you tell Malcolm that his sister passed away. What? And to make that, and as we're driving, we're all just, uh, mm-hmm. just crying and all of this. Then around maybe. 15 days later, so she passed away on the 5th. I uh, the, the funeral was on the 26th. So maybe around, maybe let's say the 15th, it hits me. Like, she had fibromyalgia. She had lupus. She had an autoimmune disease that they couldn't even figure out what's wrong with the. I'm like, she was in a walker. I'm like, my baby girl ain't in pain no more. Hmm. She she was struggling. The the way yo, if you, you get a toothache, was her entire body, mm. and there wasn't medicines that would stop it. The, it would numb. It would numb the pain down, but it mm-hmm. wouldn't stop the mm-hmm. pain. So yeah. she's in constant pain. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, "All right, God, you this happened. We always tell other people condolences, or you know, you see then someone pass like, oh man, whatever. I'm here. I'm mm-hmm. not supposed to be here right now. Mm-hmm. Not this soon, because I'm, I'm, I got some things that was about to take off, and she was going to experience this with me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, what did you want me to learn from this? And I noticed the change of just even my my stand-up is coming from like a, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Y'all can't tell me shit. Mm-hmm. I lost my best friend, my daughter, and... I don't care how this set goes. This is what you're gonna get. I had a, I had my JFL call back uh, a couple of days ago, and I went on stage. And the first things that came out of my mouth was, "I'm like, guess I gotta make y'all motherfuckers laugh in order to change my life, huh?" <laughs> and I just looked at it's it. It's pretty real. <laughs> it's very real. It's very real. So y'all, y'all, you y'all tell me. are the determining factor. I don't even know you, sir. There's some of y'all in here without a job, and you get to determine my fate. That's the craziest shit ever. Damn. Do you not know what I had to do to be on this motherfucking stage right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gave him that that slice of realness. Man. Like, you thought you were going to hear jokes? That first this is real. attempt at JFL, you get three minutes? Yeah. Three minutes to make somebody laugh. I have to prove to you and these judges that I am worthy of your consideration in three minutes. Minutes, and I'm I'm already at 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 at, at, at a disposition because they're only going to allow so many black Ooh. people. You can say whatever you want, Damn. Mm-hmm. but the reality is they're only going to give so many slots away to black people. And I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I, I don't care. You're not going to convince me otherwise. You're not. And some of it is some of it is racism truly at play. Some mm-hmm. of it is like. The same way that black people love to see representation, white people want to see representation too. Yeah, it's a numbers game. They're mm-hmm. gonna only allow so many black roles in in certain shows. They're only gonna allow so many black leads in certain, you know, uh, franchises and things of that nature. It it just is what it is. It is what it is. It's no different from when they did Twelve Years a Slave and when they were doing the marketing <laughs> for it over in Europe. They had to have Brad Pitt. At the top of the fucking poster, Brad Pitt was in 12 Years a Slave all of 5 minutes and 15 seconds. Mm. But he's on the top of the poster like he is the leading star. (laughs) That's wild. 12 Years of Slave with Brad Pitt. This shit is crazy. And this is the shit we willingly endure. We endure this shit with a hope of making it. 
There's no blueprint. None. There's no guarantee. Nope. There are not enough books that you can study to ensure uh-uh. your success. Got a bunch you of are them. going there on a on a on a hope and a prayer. Huh. Hope and a prayer. Where everybody else is hoping and praying at the same time. You're seeing all the comics in the back pacing around. And I'm just like this. I'm like, will y'all calm the fuck down? I get it. I've been there. I'm, I, I got stage fright. I understand. But mm-hmm. I don't want to get this stage fright because I'm like, I got to do this or else. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I don't want. I don't even like that pressure. Because what to hear saying is like, this industry, there's already so many that's going to happen. I did an Applebee's commercial, and I'm the only black person in it, had white counterparts. And um, they was like, a DP was tripping off the light. He's like, oh, I can't figure out this fucking light. And they're like, what's wrong? And they're like, come look. Huh. They look, and they say, oh, you need to go get the Tay Diggs light. Wow. Apparently, Tay Diggs is usually the only black person in a lot of his projects. Or he's the darkest one. So they had this special light where, where they like, call it the Tay Diggs light. Yeah. I'm assuming white people said this. Too. Oh, I 100%. wonder if he knows that. That's I don't know. This I have a friend. We have a friend that knows Tay Diggs, and I'm going to hit her up and like, does Tay know that? I and so it's a person a black standing light. like right in front of me, <laughs> holding one of those Kino flows. Uh, he's not. He uh, he yeah, knows that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's just doing this with me, and I'm over here so <clears throat> embarrassed, bro. I'm like, why don't y'all turn the light down? Why don't you turn the light up and block the light off down? Why mm. I got to be the motherfucker? Is mm. it, was it? That was all it was, a Kino? Well, it was, it was It's just a, a little extra bump of light because mm-hmm. they're not lighting the actual set properly. That's what mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Because they shouldn't uh, have to bring Have you ever it. heard that term? Tay uh, Diggs light? Never heard Tay Diggs light. There's other, definitely other terms. Nigga light? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's the one I use. <laughs> <laughs> the Jigga food? Just get straight to it. Oh, oh, illuminated. Just get straight to it. Can we it. get the, the spook in the corner light? <laughs> Nick light. We got the spook Bring in the corner the light. light. Where's that at Ikea? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, where, wild. where's lighting? Can we bring the Zamunda light out? <laughs> Do we have the Zamunda light ready? Hello, bad boy. Usually <laughs> here it's the opposite, actually. If there's too many black people and there's only one white person, then they're like, now this guy looks like he's a ghost. Mm. Everyone else looks well lit. So. It's the mm. Matt Damon light then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Damon. <laughs> Break out the Damon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a black light. <laughs> hey, how'd you do it? Did you? How was the three minutes when you said when you came? Oh out? no, I, I I crushed it. Oh, yeah, nice. it, it yeah. was. So, so you know, yeah. but now it's just, just, just a we'll see. Mode. Yeah. Because even if you kill, there's still a little politics yes, in play. There's a lot, a lot of, of politics. little variables. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm gonna go. I feel like I'm gonna be there. I okay. was the most authentic version of myself. And like my my daughter left her mad her face mask in the front of my place the last time she was there. And I, it's still there. I leave it mm-hmm. every time I leave out the house. I just tap it. Just a little. Just for you. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, the day. Just like the whole day. This oh, for you. This is for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my intentions are different. How mm-hmm. I spend my time. How I listen to conversations. Mm-hmm. Because even though I we were talking earlier about just like how our futures can change. Like we can change our lives in just an instant. I could throw this right here, hit you upside the head. Now, the whole course of history has changed. You, you hate me, maybe, whatever. Just the, it's, this, it's, a, it's a ripple in time, yeah. and we all have the power to change a ripple in time by any decision that I make. I can take mm-hmm. your glass, break it. Now it's a whole, you take mine. It's a, it, did you see everything everywhere all at once? I did not. So in that movie, the way they discuss like parallel dimensions, it's that exact same way. And the uh. way they go to like travel to them, are like, okay, I'm going to throw this at someone. And then down the in the future, it affects something super huge that then affects the present. But that's exactly how they describe it in that way. It's like in that moment, Dang. doing something wild will set off a chain reaction that will then affect It's crazy. Everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. That whole show, that new show, uh, Beef, mm-hmm. on Netflix is, is like that. It's like a one little road rage accident leads into these people's life just negative, negative, mm. negative, and they just keep it's seeing each other. And keep, yeah. It just spiraling, and, and it all comes down to you just, if you just didn't honk or didn't flick somebody off, it's just like that one little decision led to this whole shit that did and, not need to happen. And then it's vice versa. Mm-hmm. The, you know, it's, cra- it's crazy, because we got to get ready and get up out of mm-hmm. here. They're they going to be here in the no, fall. you're good. Okay. Because um, this, this is such a real conversation. It, it's crazy how deaf gives you certain perspective and even in that time of trauma it sometimes brings you peace mm-hmm. and that peace 
is humbling, it's grounding, and it sometimes restores your vision of what is important. And it sounds like that's what it did for you, yeah. especially when it comes to like comedy, because you know the anxiousness that we get before we hit the stage is. You know that should be studied too because it's no settling. Like even if you know you got a foolproof set, like there's still a little anxiousness. Like what if they ain't fucking with this, mm-hmm. right? But to have that that peace when you go out there, I'm like, well, this is me. And you know, us coming, me and my wife coming, open about being poly. Like it it gave me that because I was terrified of you know certain people you know and their opinions and speculations. Like anytime you tell somebody you can do with something out the normal, you know you the the, the feedback is. It's very right, and so you tell people that you're poly or anything like that, it's like they automatically assume that you're a sexual deviant. <laughs> a lot of people who aren't aware of a lifestyle, they be like, Oh, you just fucking everybody, you probably want to fuck me the whole time. I'm like, I still had standards, let's, let's reel it back in, you know. And so, but being free like that, that that wake up every morning and be like. I'm just living who I am mm. is is also rewarding, mm. you know. Mm. It's it's uh, that thing I talk about getting older. You're like, I'm okay with yeah. everybody not liking me. Mm-hmm. Like I can't please everybody. It's mm-hmm. impossible. It's it's very impossible. I mean, you you look at the highest grossing movie, whatever it is, you'll find somebody that does not I hate care that for shit, it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, well, if. This movie can't do it. This artist can't do it. Hell, there are people who judge Jesus. Who am I to think that I can make everybody love me? Ah, I'm giving these people too much credit. We picked the industry that don't even have stats like that. It's <laughs> very true. Very it's not true. Like a, it's not like we picked the industry where you could just put up numbers and be like, this is how good he did. Like The funniest person on earth can be trashed to the next person. There's no... So how could you even expect to... Yeah. It's literally impossible. And it's subjective, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you ask... You know, I ask you who's the favorite comedian. Uh, anybody in this room... You know, you might get three different answers, but it might not be me. I asked my mom, who's the funniest comedian. She's going to say me. Yeah. It's, well, it's like you bring in three different judges for that setup. They're going to give you probably completely different answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, you have to learn to accept the things that you cannot control. Embrace it. Accept it. Uh, respect it. Even if you don't like it, you yeah. know, there's just certain things you can't control. And it's like, man, listen, focus on what you can. Yeah. Find the happiness in that. Yep. Be satisfied with that. You know, you're not gonna win everything, but you're nope. not gonna lose everything either. Nope. So that balance is and 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 recognizing that balance is 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 a is a goal, not a goal, but a uh, a strength. Yeah. You know, to be able to lean on them. Like, all right, this is one of my turn yet. And I get it because I like I just went out. I couldn't talk about it at the time. It's a, it's an NDAs, but I went out for some Marvel shit, mm-hmm. and I know I killed it. And then I got a second. Uh, review thing, and I was like, I I know you ever had one. You uh, you audition, you're like, oh, I know, uh, I, oh, yeah. I know, I killed that shit. Yeah. I mean, from the clothes I audition in, I put time into mm. lighting, I put time into getting off book. I killed that. My wife did an amazing job reading with me. Yeah, I was proud of us. If we had won that, it would have changed our lives, and that would have been a fucking win for the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to Not be. Not right now. And that's cool because maybe I got some more learning to do. That that amount of money come in is gonna change my life forever. I need to learn how to do X, Y, and Z before I get that 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 blessing like that. So like now I'm learning to accept the and, and not not ex- just accept but like welcome the the L's and turn those into lessons because I never know what I could fuck up by getting something too soon. Here's something. Oh, here's a test the test the story. So. Uh, two, 2021, January, uh, maybe 2nd, 2021, I booked the uh, AT&T commercial. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was going to be a Super Bowl spot. Oh, shit. Now, I just came from doing Utah, and uh, I found out I had COVID. Mm. So I need this. This is, this is Super Bowl. This is, you know, it would be some nice little piece of paper. So um, I... Figured out, I was like, hey, I called my homeboy up. I said, like, hey, man, I need you to go and take this test for me. He was like, for real? I'm like, yeah, because I got it, and you know, I, but I need this gig. Mm-hmm. And um, he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. He's like, what's the spot for? I'm like, oh, it's for at and It's the one with Demi Lovato. Nah, nah, nah. And he's like, oh, snap. I'm on a veil for that. So if you don't get it. I will, so nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, dude, I'll give you $300 right now. He was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. So I was like, dang. So You called I, an actor friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he looked like me. He had fro glasses, uh-huh. comic, whatever. So I uh, 
So I'm going, I call somebody else to do it. He's like, all right, I'm going to do it. He's like, but I, he's like, I don't really look like you. I'm like, man, put a face mask on, some glasses and a hoodie and a hat. These are white folks. They're not going to really, really trip off that. Mm-hmm. So I go. I end up, uh, we there. And he goes, take the test. We driving back. I'm like, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So we driving. And this dude says, <clears throat> no way. I this get on, this dude. I'm like, what's up, man? You good? He's like, well, I'm good, man. I I had I just got my first negative test result yesterday. No, he didn't tell you earlier. He didn't tell me earlier. So I I drop him off and I'm like, he's like, I'm good, I'm good though. I promise you, man. I promise you. Whatever. Give him the three hundred dollars. And then I end up uh, calling one of my white friends. I was like, man, oh, it's because I get a I get a text from production like, hey, we're gonna also test you on set. So now I'm like, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. Call my boys up. They said, hey. This some redneck shit. They's like, if you rinse your nose out with bleach, you can pass any test. You could pass on also. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. That was the worst let advice me, I've ever heard. Let me see if I still have this photo because I took a what you didn't so, do well. You so didn't, listen, you hurt. I oh, um, it was the most painful experience I ever. You did the bleach did. thing. I did it. It was uh, rubbing alcohol. It was oh. just equally, oh, as, equally as bad. Yeah, equally yeah. as bad. Like, well, if you, oh, you ever my God, get bro. like uh, any like alcohol, drink up your nose or anything like that? So, yeah, yeah you ever had water up like, your nose? Yeah. Damn yeah, near down. So this is how I look after I did it. I took a picture of my face. I was oh, like, man, shit. I think I'm about to die. I'm like, my eyes oh, started turning wow. red. I started sweating. I do the test. It passes, right? So they come to me. They was like, just got to let you know that you can't do the spot, though. And I'm like, what? Why? They like the test that you took yesterday tested positive for COVID. So the, your, 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 your scapegoat had COVID, yeah. too. Yeah. The guy, uh, so they like, you can't do the spot. So I'm over here. I'm pissed, obviously. I'm cussing God. I'm like, why'd you even let me get this far if I couldn't have this? ba da 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 Next month, I book Verizon and make seven times more than I would have than I would have on that AT and T, and you probably wouldn't have because of the cl- the clause. It was yeah, too it would have been right? a, it would have been a clause. Damn. Listen, I don't. I stop questioning shit, man. That is one of the things that I also learned this year. My wife used to always tell me this. We 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 used to do these events at this little, this little bar, and it'd be packed, and I'm like, man, if I just had 20 more people, so I hop on the phone. I'm trying to text people to come out, right? And it didn't matter how packed it was. I always felt like I needed more, right? My wife was like, you got to be comfortable with what you have. Like, you do a good job promoting. You just got to be, if it's 80 people, great. If it's 50, great. They still came out. You got to learn how to be comfortable with what you have and not trying to force things, right? And... Then a really good friend, my, my other best friend, told me the exact same thing. And now I find myself in these situations where I start thinking, I'm like, man, if I had it, I'll stop immediately. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm thankful for nice. what I have. I'm blessed. I have my health. I have the activity in my limbs. I'm good. Yeah. And I stop trying to force things. Like, And when you're talking about that, I'm, I'm hearing you, and it's like, this is me trying to force this vacation or force a house to look for or force a way to figure out how to get this whatever the fuck but like I would put so much energy into trying to force something and I should have let it go on the first the first attempt that didn't work out and it's a difference between mm. having diligence and perseverance than forcing mm. something because mm. a lot of the things that I'll be trying to force it's not something that's going to advance my career mm-hmm. it's really probably something that's just going to cost me more money right right but I'm trying to force it so bad and just wheel a circle into a square and it's not working. Then I get frustrated. Now my attitude's bad. Now I'm fucking up the energy in the house all because I couldn't let something go. And when you're talking about that, I'm like, damn. This is, damn, and it's another crazy. one of those lessons that I learned that I took into this new year and, you know, really have been cognizant and present of when I'm about to go down that spiral yeah. and stopping myself before it happens. And my energy has been tremendously better because of it. That's a good idea. But I mean, you could damn near miss out on having fun at the party worrying about those getting those yep. extra 20 people. And now it's like, oh, damn, I, 
I, I was worried that whole time <laughs> instead of just having fun. Instead of just having fun. I think we're always thinking of the next level and like mm-hmm. that next phase. That it's hard to mentality. it's hard to enjoy where you're at, you yeah. know. Especially that's why it's like, you know, you see even even today, like sometimes you 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 go somewhere and you get your flowers or you give somebody their flowers and their reaction is like, damn, I I forgot I did all that stuff. Or like, mm-hmm. damn, that, that was a lot of stuff because you're always just what's next, what's next, what's next, mm-hmm. thinking about that next thing. And it's really hard for us to just be like, this is dope. This this yeah. is dope. You know, you yeah. usually you wait till it's over and you'd be like, damn, that era was really cool. But now it's like it's like every time you're like, no, this is this is dope, and I can. You don't want to be stagnant, so you still yeah. want to work for that mm-hmm. next level. But sometimes we get obsessed with the next level that you you forget where you at, and then you know you. Chances are there's people whooping their own ass to get to where you at, <laughs> and but we don't see that because we doing the same. It's yep. it's a it's Some a really advanced. weird staircase. Yeah. yeah, you have to learn. And I I I mean, we are all guilty of it. I, I make it a point. To point out my friends' successes and giving them their flowers, I I do it all the time. The pack, and I, I I tell this motherfucker how creative he is. This motherfucker, bro, I don't even understand <laughs> the way his brain works. Dude. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. This motherfucker did one. This is gonna be <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite ones. Is when he did how Egyptians used to rap, like an Egyptian rapper, and he was like. Uh, bird, bird, pharaoh. Oh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I forgot. It was like it lady was, with bass. That, it was, bird, bird, bird papyrus. They're rapping in hieroglyphics. Yeah, it was just rapping in hieroglyphics. <laughs> and it was just like hilarious. Like, who thinks like hilarious. that? I, 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 that. I mean, I just, just like I appreciate <laughs> other people's talent so much, and like I just never want <laughs> a day to go by or, 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 or anything to happen. And my friends not know how much I love and appreciate them and their artistry and what they bring to it. It's be those little small things that I think about and it make me smile mm-hmm. on a fucked up day. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, nigga, that's that's crazy. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like those little things, it's such a blessing when we, you know, encounter them. And that's something that we latch on to because it's like, man, I can I can really appreciate that shit. Yeah. So. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank <laughs> you, man. And back to you to hear <laughs> the show. All right, before we get out of here, man, um, what um, tell them about the the HGTV show yeah, because that was fucking dope as shit and, and groundbreaking as hell. So uh, HGTV, I've actually been trying to sell. I was trying to sell that show for five years. So the 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 true e Hollywood story is I was working at a production company. I'm gonna give y'all the short one. Uh, I was working at a production company and I was listening. I was a, I used to be a, a reality TV show editor. And so I heard them, uh, the development department, complaining about uh, they like HGTV is looking for diverse shows. They ain't got no people of color, so we got to come up with some ideas. And I told them, I was like, oh, me and my brother flip homes. And it's like, whatever, Willie. Like they brushed me off. Mm-hmm. So I went home to St. Louis, and when me and John, bought, we had like two homes at this time, and I filmed everything. I filmed it on some, on a couple of phone cameras. Uh, I had a, like a little Canon one, and then I edited it together. I knew how to edit. I was an editor, so I put together this sizzle and I showed it to them. Like, look at this. I, this is us. They were like, mm, Nah, really. I mean, this is cool and all, but nah, stick to editing and whatever. Blah blah blah. Oh, they love to keep people in boxes in L.A. Well, don't they, though? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because if you move on, then like now we got to hire someone else. Right. To mm-hmm. edit, mm-hmm. So. Shit, yeah. I get it. I get it. But it's still like, fuck, bro. So yeah. I end up throwing it up on YouTube. And I was like, I threw it up on YouTube and I put like $300 on promotion. Mm-hmm. And I used the hashtag HGTV. I used the hashtag home improvement. Da, 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 da. And so now a uh, production company started reaching out to me. Mm. 2017, 2018, whatever. So then in 2020, Black Lives Matter became a really big thing. And there was a hashtag called HGTV So White. Mm. And so now they like, oh snap! They caught us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> HGTV is Must visual anthropology. <laughs> they ain't got no, nothing for black people in that bitch. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The only free people in there is the clothing. So, so, so they, uh, so they, re- so another production company found us. And uh, we started developing the idea. We shot the sizzle in 2020. Uh, shot then uh, we got green lit in 2021 by HGTV. By HGTV. Okay. So they was going like, all right, bet it's happening. But 
they didn't want they wanted to show that they tried. So they gave us they gave us a, a, our show time was on Wednesday morning at eight a.m. Is that good? No, no, that's terrible. People For are going HGTV, to work. maybe? No, no, no they're going. They're going. TV. People are going to work. Uh, Eastern not even, Standard man. Time. I thought that I don't know what age group kids aren't watching, watching TV in that. Or, kids aren't that watching show. HGTV. Eight AM Eastern Standard Time is five AM yeah. PST. Oh, yeah. I see Nobody's what you're up. Nobody. And if they are up, up they're not they're watching, watching that. HGTV. Damn. So they end up canceling the show, saying based on the numbers. We uh we gonna go ahead and cancel it. So That's they end wild. up canceling it. But I always have the credit of so the show was on HGTV season. Oh, huh? Did they give a season? No, three episodes. They okay, did like three episodes. And then um, the house stuff. Me and my brother really do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got we just bought three commercial buildings in St. Louis Hell just yeah. now. Like this is what we do. Cause That's crazy. My brother is the one who's uh, one of the people who I was couch surfing on when I was out here and doing like one of those rough periods, mm-hmm. and, and I, I end up getting this commercial that kind of changed my life. And my brother said, "What are you doing with the money that you making from these commercials?" I was like, "Oh man, I got stacked up in the bank." He's like, "You're so stupid." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What?" He's like, "You know how much money you are losing by leaving it in the bank." You could just be bringing that to St. Louis and start buying these properties and renting them out, and then mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. We gonna get into these tax lien sales. I was like, "All right, cool." So that's kind of a conversation that we had mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. end up taking you know, where the where all this even started happening. Um, so yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's so dope. That's I mean, hella dope. that really shows that like people don't want to help you out until you prove it works. And then all of a sudden, they want to act like they they there, you yeah. know. So and it's, have, it's good you that y'all did it yourself. Uh, <laughs> of Olive and uh, two seventy, which is like a, they're they're building a, a Costco there and mm-hmm. a Target there. Uh-huh. So we are gonna have an event center. We are gonna have a coffee shop. Is uh, Max Coffee House is what it's gonna be called. We're already nice. roasting our own beans oh, in a co-working dope. space. Damn. So that's, that's a lot of shit. It's a lot of shit, right, bro? Man. That's because I stay out there when I go to the city. I do not stay in the city. Yeah, yeah. I do nah. not stay. The, that, that's they'll catch you out there. I took him to St. Louis for the first time in December, and yeah. we did a, a live episode of the podcast. And we did it uh, by hair stow, mm-hmm. um, in those new buildings over there, new businesses and shit like that. But we stayed. In U City, yeah, like, I'm, I, I can't stay in the city too close to the city because you ain't gonna be looking for trouble. Man. Trouble will find you if you're just hanging out on Kings Highway. Give it thirty minutes. Yeah, Kings Highway ain't natural bridge. Give it goody, thirty goody. minutes. Goody, goody. Give it thirty minutes, minutes. from give any th- any part of the day. Minutes. Give it thirty minutes. Even in the morning, it's Bruh. a White Castle right across the street on that corner. If if White Castles don't get you, some shit at the BP gonna get you. If the BP, I remember one of my homeboys, old lady, used to work at that bank Man. right there. Listen bank got here. robbed broad daylight. It was like 2 p.m. I was like, who the fuck is robbing a bank at 2 p.m.? Listen fucking here. St. <laughs> Louis Kings is Highway wild. sounds lovely. Wow. I'm looking for this photo that someone just sent me. They was like, y'all always stay on top of the uh, chart of, of murders. Yeah, and sheesh. Murder capital probably 12 years in a row. 12 years, 12 years strong. Yeah, yeah, they got T-shirts. 15 most dangerous cities. Number one, St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah, we got Nikki. And it, it's it's crazy because Nikki repping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because um Chicago probably has more violence, but per capita, St. Louis wins because it's a much smaller city and the it's pure concentrated violence. Jesus. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. So you guys like, talking yeah. about East St. Louis specifically? No, no. East St. Louis. Man. That's that's in Illinois. That's a whole different story. That's Is that more from. or less dangerous? That's it's sad. weird because right now the poverty is so high. People are really just trying to survive there. I mean, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. It's still violence there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that it doesn't like make the news as much because it's it's so high poverty. Mm-hmm. Like, news, it's got to be some real shit to go down there, like multiple bodies. If the yeah. 99 cent store was a city, it would be East St. Louis. Right, well, first of all, you won't have to do that. What you doing right what now? What would St. Louis be? St. Louis would be... It would be Kmart. It'd be Kmart. Is Bed Kmart a lot around still? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. But just a comparison too. <laughs> they're perpetu- they're yeah. in perpetual closing. So anyone you find that's actually open is probably Dillard's. in a, yeah. stand, in a way of closing itself. Yeah, it's, you know, 
<laughs> it's like, you know, they they really feel like they got their shit together, but it's like, hold on, bitch, you're not Target. You can't so let's just reel it. Let's just. <laughs> Burlington Co Factor. Yeah. yeah, let's just reel it back in. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm, I'm thankful for the city I'm from. Uh, it may, it ain't St. Louis. If you can survive it, you can survive anywhere. It will make you a hustler. Uh, it will make you, you know, have perseverance because mm-hmm. you have a lot of shit stacked against you, especially if you're a creator because there mm-hmm. aren't a lot of creative outlets there. You don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of roles for upper mobility when it comes to creativity there. Hmm. You're either going to be a rapper or you're going to be in sports. Damn. And then the, the percentage of those people that get out is, is very low as well. Mm-hmm. So they don't encourage, yeah. they don't encourage creative thinking. So, I mean, Missouri was one of the last Northern states to abolish slavery. They was holding out. They was like, nah, it's gonna turn back. It's gonna turn back. It is very segregated. Very, very, seg- very segregated. Very uh, Like literally, you can tell when you're leaving a black neighborhood going to a white neighborhood, and vice versa. Hmm. Like it, it's visibly. Yeah, it doesn't segregated. blend at all. Yeah, it's I'm just seeing that. A lot of the edges gothic, is fucked up. A lot of edges not <laughs> yeah. The edges is so fucked. Up. There's no fade. I, I didn't know there was so much like gothic looking architecture. It seems like every every building. Looked like uh, Batman was on top of it. Some <laughs> <laughs> Hippies hate on me in the comments today. God damn, she oh. on my ass for every word. Hippie, just on my ass. You know what? Fuck it. We in uh, we ending this goddamn episode. Y'all got enough. Y'all don't appreciate these jewels. Anyway, <laughs> Willie Mac, thank you so much for coming on the show, dope. man. Thanks for uh, having me. Thank absolutely, bro. Thank Amazing episode. story, bro. I can't wait for you to say that you're about to drop. Drop drop the goddamn book, man, because I know it's got to be coming. Got oh, a yeah, book the coming book, too. We didn't even, that's we didn't, gonna, gonna happen. Damn. We ain't even get into the uh, <laughs> everything. This <laughs> motherfucker has a trick. Man. He does on, well, I don't know if you do it on stage. I've seen you do it on a podcast. Yeah, where we, yeah. We I take that. my teeth, my dentures out. <laughs> oh what? Whoa, whoa! <laughs> First of all, he fuck let the, you he let the top that off on dramatic. the Maybach. He <laughs> left, <laughs> I didn't know he was gonna take the center middle out. It was just, it wasn't the whole thing. It what was the hell a, was the center middle? It's the T tops. You dropped the T tops. That was the on center the middle. <laughs> I get my mother had got Lamborghini doors. <laughs> that shit, that shit <laughs> oh Lamborghini door mouth ass. <laughs> Shout out. Do you uh, always wear the thing, or do you just be going uh, with, the, with the whole? Sometimes I go sometimes. without. It's like. Picture it like a woman's bra. Like it feels comfortable without wearing. So when it. you get home, you be like, oh man, I'm like, bitch. Oh. oh god, I put it in my denture <laughs> cleaner. Let the little fizz. Bu- you ever like drink soup through it? I've left my things at home before. Oh, like I'll just drive shit. out and I'll be like going to an audition. I'll be like, oh. <laughs> so then I gotta do my audition like this. I gotta talk a little like fifty. You know, <laughs> I really do. You like I'm in the the bottom <laughs> middles. <laughs> I'm too young to think that I need to wear. Oh, I not now, but yeah. like like the first few years of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. I understand. <laughs> I got. I had. I'm. 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 I'm one bridge in, and probably want to get another one on this side. Mm. That means teeth will. I've that heard you of will feel young and, 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 and youthful, but you have some teeth problem. That shit will date you. Will it? Won't the, it though? That's I the middle eating bottom. Soft foods immediately. Grapes. Goddamn me, fig Newton bars. Goddamn me, prunes. I mean, some noodles. I like when I see bone people, chicken. No, give me some tenders. I even the ones tenders. that eat ice. Do you know people that eat ice? Oh, that's what really fucked that's us up. That's crazy. Ice yeah, and sweet yeah. tea. Ronnie said it yesterday on Zoom with the homies. Ice, I mean, sweet tea has killed so many <laughs> back teeth. <laughs> Just taking these niggas out, man. You ever left them? You ever left them in a bite? <laughs> no. I, I, <laughs> Like, the, like if you ate something too hard and it came out. There are certain things I won't eat because they they will like they, they it does hurt. Oh shit! Like, so yeah, like I feel it. It's on, it is uncomfortable. It's on your gum. Yeah, it's on my gum. Like you putting something wow, in your goodness. mouth and then yeah. like I want to spit this shit out. Mm. That's wow. Yeah. Damn, that was crazy. That was a cool little. Surprise I will idea. say like if I'm with a female though. I will like not take them out for a while. Like I'll go mm. to bed because you're not supposed to wear these more than like 16, 17 hours. Oh, but mm. you'll just but I'll I'll yeah. Yeah. get up, you spend I'll, the night. I'll, yeah, that's, 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 you got to set an alarm to get up yeah. before her. He got to run to the bathroom <laughs> trying to get his face together. And so she's like, ah, oh. I'm like. 
yeah. Secure the draw, draws you first. Are, how you doing? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> well, listen, man, tell the people where they can find you at, all your socials, uh, all your handles. Uh, if you got a website, drop all of that. And if you got any projects coming up, please let the people know so they can know where they can find you and support you. Yeah, Willie Mac on everything, W-I-L-L-I-E-M-A-C-C. We got a podcast with my boy Danny Afro Noodles. Look that up. And my son's podcast, AO. It's, it's it's on my it's on my Willie Mac page, so just find it there. It's called and, AO. Yeah. Oh, so he knows he says that. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, he cool. knows he says that before every every single one. Yo. And then y'all send y'all good vibes and stand up and you know just there we out here. We out here, man. We out here. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm to hear more. I'm Patch Cloud. And this has been another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. We didn't get to do the 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 uh, the opening, but we just got to have Willie Mac back, and we'll do two more. Come back. Next, oh man. yeah. Uh, thank y'all so much for watching Scary Squad. More my love, y'all. We'll see you next week on another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Peace, guys. Later, guys. <laughs>